right now, Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. We've got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Good evening, everyone. Bob Pompiani here manning the fan cave at KDK Plus. It's 412-575-2600. Lots to get into. The Pirates had a day off, but the Penguins did not. They played back-to-back -back games. Andrew Filipponi is standing by at 93.7, the fan. And, Andrew, uh, it looked like the Penguins didn't have the legs. The age was starting to set in. They were down 3-1. They had lost seven straight to the Devils. And in those seven, they had not scored more than two goals. It looked like the same outcome until, boom, everything changed. Five goals in ten minutes. And somehow, someway, they won. Couple that with a loss by the Capitals. Sets up a very interesting matchup Thursday night in D.C. Yeah, Bob, the Capitals, the Flyers, these teams ahead of the Penguins, they don't want to apparently uh, finish the job and uh, put them out of their misery. Instead, they've left the door open. And tonight, you saw that 3-1 game of the third period. And there was a penalty that got called on Jesper Brat, a slashing penalty. I thought it was an Eric Carlson penalty. Instead, it was on New Jersey. And that changed the game, Bob, because that's when Sidney Crosby scored a power play goal. It made it 3-2. And then the floodgates open from there. Yeah, and we're taking a look at the first goal uh, that Carlson had scored, but then back to back to back goals. And that's a mistake there. Curtis Lazar in deep. And watch Carlson. He and Joseph both behind the goal line. Can't do that. Can't leave people like that. Goalies uh, really at risk at that point, and they scored. And then another mistake. Crosby with a bad drop pass triggers this. Again, the fence pinches up when they shouldn't have. Jesper Bratt makes it three to one. And Nadalkovich, I got to say, he is making some really big saves. Dawson Mercer will attest. He wasn't happy. And that was a big save because it set up this. This is the power play you're talking about, Andrew, when Crosby and Malkin both alongside Allen, and he gets the goal, does Crosby. He's standing right there. It's number 38. So now it's getting interesting, 3-2. And just seconds later, another goal here. Jack St. Ivan, he's first NHL point. Evgeny Malkin gets the goal. He's been hot. And that one on a nifty deflection makes it three to three game. They weren't done. This time it's Ricard Raquel. And they got in Allen's head a little bit there. He hadn't scored consistently all year, but he got a big one there to make it 4-3. And then seconds after that, another one. Michael Bunting at three assists. He goes to Evgeny Malkin, his second of the game, 5-3. Crosby gets an empty netter. And suddenly now it's intriguing. You know, I still look at their chances, Andrew, and say, all right, you know, they're not that good compared because they have to climb over a lot of teams. One of those teams won tonight. They were down one nothing. where the Islanders to Chicago. They end up coming back and winning that game 2-1. to one. You kind of hope they lost. But it's going to come down to this head-to-head, -head, and there are so many head-to-head -head matchups. Pittsburgh, Washington, uh, Islanders against the Flyers, and, and so on and so forth. So even though there's still three points behind Washington, that can change very quickly. I think they can probably only afford to lose one more game in regulation the rest of the way, given the teams that are still alive and what they're going to have to do to get in, either as the third team from the Metro or the last wild card. Uh, I don't think they have a lot of room for air. Uh, I think they got to win in Washington on Thursday. If not, you got to at least get the game to overtime and make it only a one-point game. Keep yourself four points out. You still have to go to Toronto. You still have a game against Tampa Bay. You still have Boston. Boston yeah. So you still have some really tough teams. Now we'll see how Boston plays down the stretch here. They're not chasing any records like they did last year. Maybe they'll take their foot off the gas a little bit. But, Bob, I thought when they blew the game in Columbus on Saturday, it was over. And I give this team a lot of credit. Sidney Crosby leading the charge for the way they played in New York on Monday against a great team and the way they rebounded in the third period tonight when it looked like the game was over. And I really want to give credit to Alex Nedeljkovic. I know he didn't pitch a shutout tonight. New Jersey still scored three goals. But let's call it like it is. He is a much better big game goalie than Tristan Jari, which was why I never wanted to give Jari that extension. If he's sick, Jari, if he's not sick, Jari pl probably plays in at least one of these games. And that save we saw Nedeljkovic make to keep it a two-goal lead, I'm not sure Jari makes that save so he should regardless of if Jari says guys I'm 100 percent Nedeljkovic has to play against Washington Thursday night yeah, he has to I would agree with that just he's hot and I think uh, Mike Sullivan plays it that way anyway regardless of the situation and have whether he's uh, you know uh, he's if he's ready to play he'll be the backup and that's the way it should be although Joe Bloquist is uh, one of those guys to keep an eye on down the road because he has had a really good season he's a young kid only 21 years of age and he's one of their goalies of the future we're due for a break 
we have the Pirates to talk about as well. So uh, I guess we continue the Pucks and Bucks theme uh, on this show. Call us with your thoughts, 412-575-2600. It's the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. We're on KDK Plus and 93.7 The Fan. Call us. All right, here it is, our GMC Sierra tweet of the night. And if you didn't watch that game last night between Iowa and LSU, Caitlin Clark effect was in full view here. 12.3 million. That's more than what we saw from the Purdue Tennessee men's elite eight game. That's more than this year's Golden Glove. That's more than the final round of the Masters. That's more than four of the five NBA finals game. And it's more than every World Series game uh, last year. So that goes to show you about her impact. Uh, the Angel Reese rivalry game, it, it lived up to its billing. It was a very good game, Andrew, but that wow. goes to show you how many people uh, are watching uh, women's basketball, specifically her. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just blown away by a couple of the things on there. The Masters, Bob, I mean, that's on CBS every year. That's John Rahm winning his first major championship last April, and you're telling me that it did a better rating than that. I'm stunned by it. That's the biggest day of the year in golf. And then, look, we know baseball's World Series ratings have gone down just about every year, but, man, I, I, Texas and Arizona was not exactly Yankees-Dodgers, but those games are all on Fox. They're all in prime time. And an Elite Eight women's game did a better rating? I mean, that's great for women's basketball, but also, man, what does it say about those other sports, Bob? Yeah. It's incredible. Well, I, I just think the curiosity factor was so intense and she's gotten a lot of media play and that rivalry with her and Angel Reese was was picking up and uh, sometimes you don't have that necessarily in men's basketball. You have great teams, good players, but there isn't that head-to-head -head stuff that you see because they played in the championship last year. Let's go to our number one Cochran Go One Better call of the night. That would be JB in Shadyside who's on line one. Hello, JB. Hey, how are you guys? Good. All right, so... I have a few things. One is um, Najelkovic. I mean, he's so much better than Jari. Like, he doesn't let the floodgates open. If he's, you know, down a few goals, he keeps you in the game, doesn't let the third one in. I don't want to see Jari anymore. I'm well, sick of that guy. Okay. No way. He's, he's had a better no. year than you're he giving him credit for. Us. No, he's terrible. He's terrible in these big games. Bob, Bob, he's 28th also, in save percentage. He's awful. I mean, how do you say he's, he's having awful. a better year than people give him credit for? He's, I, I, I say that's that not early good. in the year <laughs> when they went through, you might forget, there was a 5-0-1 streak in December where he was terrific. Now, he's had ups and downs. I'm not saying that they shouldn't play Nadalkovich. What I'm saying is to just say he'll never play again is ridiculous. That's all. That caller made well, the do point. You I never you, want to play him think, again. You, okay, so what? Okay, that's ex that, that's extreme. But you think he's worth four years, twenty million dollars? In the goalie market right now, the you know for twenty eighth in the league in save percentage. Uh, okay, we'll see. Time will go. You've buried this team before, Andrew, and now you think they have a chance. We'll see. No, 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 it's, no, no. It's I'm not. not we're, we're, I'm, I'm not. not a, we're not talking. It's not it's, a season over yet. We'll just see how it f we're, plays out. We're, we're talking. We're, we're specifically talking about Jari right now. I understand and I just that. asked you. And I think he's had a. He's not had as bad a year as some people want to say. If you look at some of the games early in this season, and there were games that Nadalkovic didn't play all that well either. Back and forth, their numbers are specifically. If you look at the goals against. Numbers similar in that regard. You're right about save percentage, and I think in high quality chances, Nadalkovich has been better. I do agree with that. But you know, to say that Jari's just never going to, you know, I, I'm not ready to. Bob, go I mean, I'm they could have done. They could. They could still have Jake Gensel on this roster if they never gave Tristan Jari that contract. Weren't you saying though, midway through the season, that it looked like it was a contract that was a good one, that it was one of the better ones made by Kyle Dubis when everything else was falling apart? Uh, I would say in December it looked good, but right. you just said six games. I mean, well, I'm just saying contracts back then, and you know it's. Well, we're not going well, right, to. Well, We're not going to agree on this. I well, just think I mean, he still has a role to play here, and for five million, I'm, I'm okay with that. Maybe not for five years, but that price tag itself, uh, they've they've wasted money in other areas. I think that are are worse off. Raquel, he got a gold tonight, but he's not been worth the contract they gave him. I don't think there's any way. And some of these guys they've brought in beyond that, uh, Ryan Graves, you're, you're going to sit here and tell me that trade, that no, contract's I'm not. a good I'm, one? No, I'm saying, I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying that's an even worse one. It but is. What is Tristan, it is, but what but has I Tristan think, Jari done Graves at any point in his career? Year. I know that in big games, Maybe. you're absolutely right, and I won't argue that. I'm just saying that it's too easy to just wipe him away and say you'll never hear him again and never should play him again. Be careful what you wish for. There's injuries along the way. There are a lot of things that can happen. Anyway, let's go back onto the lines. We've got a lot of people. Brad, line one, wants to talk about the Penguins. What's up, Brad? 
Hey, Bob, I, I just don't know how in the world you can defend Jari right now. I'm I not mean, defending him. I'm just the caller said he never wants to see him play again. And I say that I he was, is not I, as bad as what people are making him out to be. Well, I my would preference would have been to never resign him. I mean, I never wanted to see him play again. I wouldn't have and brought I, him back for that I, contract, Bob. Okay. Hello? I'm just looking at market rates of what some goaltenders make. And I still think that, yeah, you know, I, we I have, have – I want to see – I'm hoping they get into the playoffs somehow, some way. And I want to see him play in the playoffs and, and at least have an opportunity to, to try to Ahead change. of Nadalkovich? Well, I want to see if whatever the case may be, if he gets a shot, I want to see what he does with it. I, I'm, I'm willing to see another opportunity in these high-level games just because they have him signed for five years. I want to see him play well in these games. Anyway, Anthony and Verona. Go ahead, Anthony. Hey, Anthony. How you doing? Good. Um, the Penguins, is they losing the winners? Is it losing the winner? What? They won last. They won tonight, they won. Anthony. Last night and tonight. They won. Mm-hmm. Okay, Anthony, thank you very much. Let's move along to John and <laughs> Apollo. John, how are you? Hi, John. Hello. Go ahead. Hi. Hi, John. Hey, I'm, I'm calling to talk about the Pirates. They are phenomenal uh, with this start they had, 5-0. and oh. mm-hmm. And the pitching is really pretty good overall for the beginning of the season. And I'll tell you right now, the hitting has just been amazing. And the acquisition of some of these other players, like Taylor in particular, I think is going to pay big benefits. I, I do. I, I, I think it's a good uh, observation. I think Michael A. Taylor really helps their outfield a lot, Andrew. I think he's a veteran. He knows how to play that position, makes it easier on those around him. Plus, he, can ha- he has some bat power there. I, I think they're... You know, their offense, you look at what they've done, nine, eight, eight, six, seven runs in five games. Uh, I'm not expecting that to continue, certainly, but I do expect that they're going to have more pop than they probably have had in the last five years. Yeah, I mean, they haven't had Sawinski do anything yet either because they've played only lefties. Cruz doesn't really tear the cover off the ball against lefties either. So once they start facing more right-handed pitching beginning tomorrow night in Washington, I would expect those guys to hit better. Uh, They look from one to nine, like a better lineup than they've had the last few years. There's not an Austin Hedges in there. There's not a guy that you look at as an automatic out. If Michael A. Taylor is your nine hitter, he hit 21 home runs last year. So I do think their lineup looks better. The starting pitching first time through the rotation, I would say, good, pretty pretty decent. Now, Mitch Keller has to do better, and Bailey Falter, you'd like to think, eventually is not in their rotation at all. But yeah, 5-0, and oh, and some of these things give you reason to think maybe it's not a fluke and it's able to be continued all, uh, for most of the season. We have a couple of uh, tweets. One of them is from Luke Andrew, and he says the Masters was on Easter last year, and that impacted the ratings. It could have. Interesting. I looked at the ratings from two years ago in the Masters. It was $15 million, so it was over that. But you're right. That's the biggest event of the golf season, and you would expect those ratings to be that way. Let's go to Ken in West Mifflin here. Ken, what's up? Hello? Go ahead, Ken. Hi, Ken. Yeah, I just can't believe that these people are going to do this all over again this year. Save this call for about the middle of June when uh, the Buccos are 10, 11, 12 games out, and it's going to be the same thing all over again. Wait till next year. Well, Ken, I understand why you're saying that, and you have every right to think that way because that's the way it's been. But I would also tell you to live in the moment, and I think they have some very interesting stories on this team. Um, you know, Andrew, we talked about Jared Jones last night. I know it's one start, but I'm, I'm encouraged. I, I'm also very interested to see what happens when Skeens get There are a lot of interesting stories on this team, and I'd rather take that viewpoint than think of what is going to happen in June because it may happen again or it may not. First of all, I don't think they were 12 games out last June. I'd have to go double-check that. And, and also, who in the division is going to pull 12 games ahead of them before the halfway point of the season? Milwaukee? Okay, Maybe. they took care of business against the Mets. Good for them, but they've lost a lot off of last year's team. Uh, the Cubs, good team, not a great team. D- uh, pretty good pitching. Some young guys in their lineup. They re-signed Bellinger. Cardinals, you'd think, will rebound from last year. The Reds are young. I mean, all these teams are about the same. All these teams are closer to 500 than they are 90 wins or 90 losses. So, I don't know. I mean, even if they... 
even if they're six or seven games under 500, Bob, I don't think they're going to be 10 games out no, I in agree. June. No, I don't either. I, and I don't think they were. I think they finished 16 games out at the end of the year. So, you know, but again, the encouraging stories for me. That's because the Brewers pulled away. The Brewers, it right. looked like it was going to be a mediocre division. They ended up pounding everybody in the NL Central. They did. Um, they have some interesting young players on that team, by the way. But I mean, you know, Cruz, Hayes, Davis, you factor in the two pitchers and some of the young guys in the bullpen. I think there's a lot to, to, to be encouraged about whether or not that results. Well, how in- about this trade tonight, Bob? I think it means Grandal's done. I don't think we ever see Yasmani Grandal. Yeah. I think it's like the guy they brought in. Yep, from I think it's like the guy they brought in from Cleveland the uh, last year who never played because he got hurt. Um, and I think it's the same situation with him. Uh, plantar fasciitis. That's a tricky injury. I think they need to get insurance because they feel like they're going to need to have multiple catchers, even with Davis's good start. Yeah. And so that's why Bart gets traded for tonight. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that, that's to me the first thing I thought of was okay, Grandal's worse off than they're saying, or or, or is. Anyway, Pony, we got to go to break. We'll take it, come back with more. This is the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. We're live, KDK Plus and 93.7 The Fan. Ken Rice is standing by with what's ahead tonight on KDK News at 11. Ken. Hey, Bob, our first alert meteorologist Ray Petlin and Kristen Emery are tracking the threat of severe weather, plus the damage the storms have already done around the region, and the three Ps when it comes to food served at PNC Park. All ahead at 11, Bob. They always are, the pierogies. Anyway, uh, all right, Ken, thanks very much. We've got some tweets here, Andrew, before we go. Sean Kramer says, I can see Sid keeping this team alive until that finale. They take on the Islanders at the end of the year. That could be something. If they get in, anything can happen. I think that's true of, of any seven-game series, but especially a team that has as much experience. Yeah. And then we get this one from Julian, who says, so at the end of the year, what do you think will be on the obituary? <laughs> I, you know, hopefully that doesn't happen, but if it does, and, and the point here from Julian is Jari or the anemic power play. And to me, we've Stinky been ranting about play. the power play forever. Yeah, power play. Yeah. yeah, power play would be ahead of Jari. Uh, Bob, what do you think is going on at Pitt tomorrow? I've heard all kinds of speculation about that. Any insight on that, what this 1 o'clock press conference is about? Out of the blue, no, I have no idea. I thought the same thing. It's kind of strange with Jeff Capel and company. Don't know. You have a guess? <laughs> you think maybe it's Bub Carrington related? It might be. I wouldn't be surprised because a lot of teams, I'm sure, have targeted him if he wants to go to someplace else. Pony, thanks. We're going to do it again tomorrow, 10:35. Good night.